Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot and welcome to MakerQuest. In this episode, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into multimeters. We're going to learn how to use them and what they actually do, as well as how to choose your very own multimeter. Woo! -hoo. All right, so first of all, uh, to really quickly cover what is a multimeter, it's basically just a handy little device like this one here that has a bunch of different types of electrical meters inside of it. So multimeter, pretty straightforward. Cool. So there are a few main differences between multimeters. So when you're picking one, it's helpful to know what those differences are and why you might want one type over another. So the, the most crucial difference is analog versus digital. So analog meters have a little dial that moves back and forth. Um, so they show real time changes of voltage and current, but they can be a little bit hard to read. So digital meters like this one have a screen that shows a digital display of your measurement. So much easier to read, but it takes a little bit of time to settle to a measurement and you can't see the um, real changes of the voltage and current. And then uh, aside from that, you also can choose between auto ranging multimeters, which basically detect the range of your measurement for you, which is really convenient. Um, or you can choose a manual range multimeter, which uh, forces you to kind of know a little bit about your measurement before you take it. Or you can just start at the highest setting and work your way down. Um, and then it's also really important to get a multimeter that has ports um, that are separate for voltage and current. So that's a safety feature for both your meter as well as you. Um, so definitely uh, get one of those that are separate. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then other than that, I would just say pay close attention to the manufacturer ratings. So there's gonna be a current rating as well as a voltage rating on your multimeter. So you wanna make sure that that fits for your particular needs. So, all right, now that we're on the same page with what we're actually measuring, let's go and measure the voltage of our car. Woohoo! All right, sweet. So now we're hanging out at my car so I can check my car battery and see if it needs a replacement anytime soon. Um, so really quickly, to avoid any danger of electrocution, always make sure that the leads are in the proper spots. So for the voltage, you want the uh, black lead in the comm setting. Actually, it always stays there, so that's easy. And you want the red lead in the uh, uh, probe slot marked with a V. Um, and since we're using DC voltage, I want to make sure that I turn the voltage measurement to the uh, V and then leave it on the dashed line. Um, so I will uh, make a comment about car batteries. They're low voltage, so it's not likely to shock you, but it's high amperage or high current. So it does actually get dangerous if you don't know what you're doing or, you know, maybe avoid checking your battery voltage if you live in Florida. No, just kidding. But seriously, just be careful. So uh, you want to locate your battery and then find the two leads on it. And so almost always, uh, cars will have the positive lead marked with a plus and then the negative lead will just be exposed uh, metal contact on the battery. So if I pull the red cap off and I can go ahead and check my battery. Zzz, no, just kidding. Haha, <laughs> no, that's totally fine. Um, Haha, 12.52 volts. That's my car battery voltage. Easy, yay. Boom, all right. So on to more cool things to do with the multimeter. So that, let's see how to actually measure current. So even though there's nothing going through this, going through the motions will help. So in this case, to measure current, I have to move one of the probes to the current setting. And I go to the um, highest current setting available. In this case, it's milliamps slash amps. And this is where things get a little tricky because in this case, um, instead of measuring electrical pressure and measuring across a component with infinite resistance, now the multimeter is measuring the flow through your circuit. So basically you want all of that flow, all of those electrons to go through your multimeter. And so in this case, we're dealing with a situation that uh, the multimeter has effectively, ideally, zero resistance. So that means that all of the electrons in your circuit are flowing through your multimeter. And so to do this, uh, that means that your black lead is not really the negative lead anymore, it's just the other side of the component. Cool, so that's a pretty quick overview of current. Um, and then uh, resistance, oh, it's beeping at me because I am trying to measure something on the 
um, <laughs> current setting. So that's good. That's also why you want one of these is because it'll be like, hey, don't do that. You're going to break something or yourself, which is always good. OK, so uh, the rest of the functions on the multimeter um, are all measured like voltage, so across a component. So uh, really quickly, if I just show you the resistor again, you measure it across the resistor. So in this instance, I'm going to measure the resistance of my hand. So I'm going to measure it from, well, it's a little hard to do with one hand, but from my thumb to my pinky. And oh, hey, look at that. Ha ha, 1.5 mega ohms. So about 1.5 million ohms. Oh, it's going up. Oh, that's interesting. OK, so now if I lick my fingers, it should go down. Oh, fine. Oh, it did. Oh, it went way down. OK, cool. So I saw uh, 300 kilo ohms when I had first licked my finger. And now I'm seeing about 1.3 mega ohms. So still lower, but it's probably evaporating or something like that. Ha! Huh. So there you go. So the resistance of your body does actually change depending on whether it's totally dry or if it's wet. Um, all right, and lastly, continuity, which is a super useful setting um, because you can figure out if power cords are broken or not, which I probably will have to use very quickly on this one since it's getting close to the end. Um, and you can also use it, like I mentioned in the first video, to figure out what types of materials conduct electricity. All right, sweet. So now that we know how to dissect little robot toys and you know maybe how to do some useful stuff with the multimeter as well, um, you can go and pick one that suits your own needs and start debugging all the electronic stuff around your house. Yay! All right, so to answer the question from the first video, I asked, what's more dangerous, AC electricity or DC electricity? And that can be a little bit of a debate because it kind of depends on what you're talking about. AC fluctuates. So usually when we're talking about AC voltage, we talk about the average AC voltage rather than the peak voltage. Whereas DC is a constant rate. So if you say 12 volts DC, it's constantly 12 volts. But that's actually what makes it more dangerous than AC. Because if you touch a DC source um, and it's between or above 20 volts, maybe above 60 volts, it will cause your muscles to contract and you will not be able to let go, which is really dangerous. The longer you have a current flowing through, the worse it is. So DC is more dangerous. All right, so please let me know if you have any questions about that or about multimeters in general. I highly recommend getting one, especially if you are just getting started in electronics. It's the coolest tool ever. All right, so thank you for watching and please subscribe.